What should the intervals be for fractional laser resurfacing for someone in their 20s? I want fractional laser resurfacing, non-ablative, for acne scars as well as skin tightening. I am in my 20s and want this to really tighten my skin as much as it can and help acne scars and discoloration. How many treatments would you recommend and at what intervals should I space treatments? I do not have too many acne scars or any that are too deep. Thank you. Thank you for your question. You're asking about time intervals between non-ablative laser treatments for your situation where you have, you're in your 20s, you have some acne scars and some pigmentation, and you state that your acne scars aren't very, very deep. Well, I can, without the benefit of a photo or physical exam, I can offer you some guidance as to how I counsel patients who are young like yourself in similar situations. A little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. Lasers of various kinds are things that we've been, have had in our practice from the very beginning since the early 90s, uh, the, the original CO2 lasers. And right now there are many very well marketed lasers that are, are, are certainly popular, but one of the things that you always have to be aware of is a very clear understanding as what kind of expected outcome you can have depending on what, uh, what type of device or strategy is being employed. I think that laser companies have done an exceptional job in creating a share of mind where consumers are basically being driven to ask for very specific brands of lasers. But I think that most physicians would, would say that essentially you always have to be well aware of the science and the intention rather than specific brands per se. So I would say that generally speaking I try to dissuade younger people in doing things that require a lot of thermal energy or anything that would potentially compromise the integrity of their skin long term. Now there's a kind of a, a, a duality here where if you want to see a result you have to be more aggressive. At the same time if you, if you are more aggressive then you have more downtime and you have to be able to justify the downtime for the outcome. Generally speaking, although you named non-ablative fractional lasers, there are actually many different modalities that can probably achieve comparable results. And this is where the art is in doing this type of management for conditions such as acne scars and pigmentations. When you get down to it, the laser device um, whole enterprise is still dealing with the common issues but with one particular category of tools. As physicians, we can use multiple modalities. So for example, let's say for pigmentation alone, we can use treatments such as Q-switch laser. And Q-switch lasers can also be effectively uh, modified depending on the type of lasers with different pulse widths to treat different conditions such as stimulating collagen, improving acne scars, improving pigmentation. So that's one modality. And then there's of course the use of modalities such as microneedling, platelet-rich plasma injection or combination of microneedling with platelet-rich plasma. Again, generally speaking, I would say that for a younger person, there's a, there's a certain amount of time and investment that is often younger people are a little bit more cost sensitive because they're starting their lives and working and it's, it's important to get deliver good value. That being said, you have to ask yourself, if your acne scars are not that deep, then what kind of outcome are you going to be satisfied with? And I also would caution you about the word tightening. Tightening is not really a goal, especially when you're younger. A youthful face is not a tight face. A youthful face has glowing skin, 
has a volume. So I would say stay away from the concept of tightening, but at the same time understand that whatever modality, if it's not, if it's less invasive, well also you, you will be maybe somewhat challenged to appreciate the full benefit. In our practice, in a situation like yours, I would sometimes combine something like Q-switch laser to treat the pigmentation and do collagen stimulation, and with that, do something for the epidermis, such as hydrofacial. And this is a microdermabrasion using water and glycolic acids. So in a way, we're kind of getting the polishing of the skin while stimulating collagen and getting two things done at the same time. So sometimes it takes a, a, a more than one approach to get a good result as opposed to one particular device. So learn more about your options. I think meet with a physician, meet with doctors to discuss these issues. I would say that if you end up going to, let's say, a, 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 a place where they have lots and lots of lasers, well, it won't take a lot of effort for someone to think that, hey, we have the best laser for your problem and not think of other modalities and solutions. I think physicians with, will have less of a bias depending on, of course, who you go to. But I think that understand, have, advocating for you and understanding what your issues are and really what kind of expected outcome is very important before you invest time and energy into pursuing anything. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.